Hello everyone. How life is going with you guys? It's all good. Oh, going into places. <laughs> well, I'm here today to tell you about another experience that I had. Okay. That one is going to be a little longer than the others because I'm going to um, involve two different people that I have been communicating with them. And these people is not in physical um, body right now. They had passed away. But I have been in contact with that people for some time. Okay, before I start the what's happened, yes, with them and uh, how I was involved in the situation, I have to tell you that these experiences is my experiences okay it happens to me and it doesn't mean that it's gonna happen to other people because that is something that is probably my duty my mission uh, in here in this planet uh, I was even talking to one of my nieces this last weekend we have been in a family in a gathering a family together in a by the sea and I was talking to her and said probably and I was telling to my sister-in-law so probably what's happened to me it's consequences of that experience that I had when I was two years old and probably also related to me being a crying baby in my mom's womb because I cried when I was in her womb my mom was about eight months pregnant seven to eight months pregnant when she heard me crying it was so freak <laughs> oh god it was a scary moment for my poor mom. <laughs> this was kept a secret for more than 15 years because I, I was told that when I was 16. Because my grandmother, my mother's mother said to my mother, don't tell anyone because if you say something to, if, the, if she knows about it when she's young and someone knew about it, the, she's going to be dead by 15. She's not going to survive after 15 years old. So my mom kept secret because she was afraid of losing me. She nearly lost me anyway when I was two. So probably all this together made me suitable <laughs> for this mission. Okay. In saying that, this couple that I'm going to tell this story, what's happened after that, uh, was related to me from very young age, okay? Uh, the father of that, um, um, that um, um, gentleman, I'm not going to say any names because there is family involved, there is, you know, uh, friendship involved so a lot of people is gonna listen to it it's, it's gonna be recorded so I don't wanna I don't wanna um, uh, upset anyone with this experience that I, because some of them is very difficult so I'm not gonna say any names okay but I was related to that the the, the gentleman by his father. His father was a Freemason like my father was. 
so they were friends and his father had a school okay a private school and i was me and my siblings was studying on his school because both were free mission uh, mason so free missions they were when they, they like brothers okay they is a very you know that very close um, society so one help each other so uh, that's why I was studying in his private school it was a very expensive one but um, I was sent in to study there and to finish the primary school so I was already known and I knew already that gentleman because he was the son of this uh, you know the owner of this school I didn't have a close contact with him because he was older than me he was uh, already in the second second uh, university he was very young he was very very uh, academic so he was very clever so he was sent to study in the United States so he came just uh, for holidays in in uh, in Brazil so uh, every time he was in holiday, then he was in school also. So that's why I was, I, I, I knew him, okay? And the lady, I met her when I was about 15 to 16. And uh, then our family got close together and then we spent holidays together with the family and, you know, things like this. So I knew both of them from when I was young. But then I grew up, I had my life and they had their life. They married, they, they met somehow because they, they were not related, but they, they met and uh, probably because of the school, because uh, she was working, because she was from another city, then she came to work in, a, in our city. So uh, they were Presbyterians from the Presbyterian church my father was from baptist church so they met and they fall in love and they married and they spent the whole life together and uh, doing a lot of charity work etc so lately about uh, i think about seven eight years ago she died by cancer okay and uh yeah about seven six seven years ago so she died by cancer i was not in brazil of course she died in brazil and it was very very sad for a lot of people because they were very known people because of the charity they, they run a very big charity in there so I was not there, I was here. But then she died, okay, she died, you know. Uh, and didn't, didn't, uh, didn't make much pain on me because uh, I, I did so them about 30 years ago. So 20, 29, 20 years, years ago, that was when I saw them the last. So didn't make any much um, uh, impact on my on my life but then about um three months to four months after her death i was taking doing my sleep to a place i suddenly got that place and it was a house a backyard house a huge front yard and a big huge wall very tall I reckon that was about three meters tall wall in front of the big busted gate I was already inside the house so I just went to the door and then I saw that big huge um, wall around and the front car, the front, I, I observe everything and it was dark, it was night. 
it was very dark i don't know if it was night in that place because apparently there is a place that is always dark okay in the spiritual world i have been in a very dark places like this in the spiritual world and i have been in a place where places where the the there is no sun and there is this type of this time now like this all the time all the time uh it's like a dome oh oh all the time it's no sun no dark night but just 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 like this all the time and i have been in a sunny beautiful places also so here we go so i was there there is more people inside okay before i i start this i i have to tell you i prayed before i start this conversation because i know it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna upset a lot of uh, spiritual world down there you know what i mean <laughs> anyway so if i i start to cough i have my water here to help me if this came again like last time so You were there inside this house. There were about 12 people inside. Um, you were talking about uh, life, about things and how to improve the spiritual life, etc. Because all of them were in the, in the, you know, in the spiritual city. And I had my guide with me, a big, massive, guide i think he's more than a guide he's probably one angel or something someone very high uh, and he was very tall also i reckon about four meters he was very tall very tall i was <laughs> like you know <laughs> and then I heard that outside, outside of the walls and the gate were a big massive noise. There were a lot of noises going on, like screaming and, you know, fighting. And I knew it was not a very nice place in the upward, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I felt that everyone was very afraid also. And then I, I said to my guide, I'm going to go out and I'm going to see what's going on. And he said, no, you don't. And I said, yes, I'm going to go. <laughs> and people said, don't go because it's very dangerous outside. Don't go because, you know, to see, yeah, but someone is screaming. Someone is asking for help and I'm not going to stay here and not give the help if I can. So I'm going to go. And then uh, my, my the, the, the guide looked at me and said, oh my God. <laughs> and then off I went. And people were down there. They closed the door after I left. And they said, oh God, okay, let's go. And then I, I walk all to the gate. And then when I walk to the gate, the gate opened for me. And then I saw just in front of the road, a big massive car it was a army car you know this army car big hill the hills the wheels are like massive wheels it looks like a four by four but army one you, you understand it's massive metal everywhere so it was impressive very impressive and i saw four big massive guys look they look like these people that go to the gym this man that goes to the gym and inject that stuff on the body and then the body gets that you know like <laughs> a hook so yeah it was like four hook men and they were they were they had a small lady very small lady and they were carrying her and forcing her one of them were were taking her like this 
embracing her like this, put her between his arms. And the other one was injecting her with something that makes her crazy. Or she was like a doll on the arms of that guy. He was like, you know, completely passed away. And he was injecting more and she was screaming and he was laughing and both of them were like making big look i can i can reproduce the sounds they were doing and she was just like a doll she was just moaning like uh, like trying to talk but she was so drunk the drug was so strong that she was not able to nothing to do nothing she was like a, a doll like you know completely completely gone and I saw it and then I look at her and I recognize her. It was my friend, the lady that I met at 15, the one that was running a massive charity place. When I saw it, I screamed my head out. I said, what are you doing? What are you doing with this lady? He, she is a saint. What the heck you are doing? And when I scream like this, they knew that you, you had someone. They, they knew that they, they were having an audience, but they, they never thought that this audience was brave enough to shout. And when I shout my, my head out, they look at me, the four of them, there were four, Two was with her and two was just walking around this car like, like, you know, zombies. Yeah, they look like, like this jumping, like a very strange one. It looks like the, the zombie um, attitude, but they were massive guys. They were massive. They were about two meters big and, uh, you know, muscle, like horrible. And she was <laughs> nothing in their hands. So when they saw me and me screaming like this, they, they, it was them. And then when they saw me, they look at me like this and they scream their head out them. They were horrible sound. And let me tell you, the, the gun that they were using to inject her was not, you know, uh, like a searing, a searing stuff. No, it was guns guns like this and the the, the 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 liquid was yellowish inside you know nearly gold but it was massive it was not something small it was massive and the needles was horrible and this i was so pushed i was so it makes me feel so so angry and brave and then I, I, I was going towards them and then my angel came and he, he just jumped. He, he didn't jump, he just, when I saw him pass in front of me like, like a flash, you know, <laughs> it's a flash. And when they saw him, they scream like mad and get inside this car. They jump like, you know, it's very interesting. You saw in the in the in the in the cartoons when the this this um, creatures in the cartoons jump like psh, psh, it's you, you it's so quick that it's not jumping like us we jump it's like a f flying you know they jump flying and one is here and then is there. You know, it's instantly. There, there is no space between them here and then inside the car, and then they they run, and the 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 vehicle went like woo, like. But the noise. You see these people that takes the the the, the gas uh, pipe from the car to make that big noise. You double it hundred times. It's the noise ahead of this vehicle, and then they run away. And then my just my guys just took her in their arms and I saw him flying with her away. And then I came back to my bed. It gives me a lot to think about it.
when I wake up and I say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I don't believe this, I don't believe this, I don't believe this, it's not possible, it's not possible, what can, how come? And the explanation I think I have is every soul decided what experience they want to have in order to help afterwards. I think she chooses it in order to experiment something that she was helping people to overcome, but she didn't know how it feels like. So I think God, you never, never allowed something to happen if it was not our decision to have that experience. So in my heart now, I think the experience that she asked for, she had in that day, okay? I know she's okay now because after that, about um, probably three years ago, I had another experience with her and um, and then I, I went uh, to a place I, when I was there already <laughs> it was a beautiful place massive uni like university or like a, a, they looks like a, a, a museum something massive incredible big higher beautiful place um, all glass and marble and uh, all white, fantastic. And then when I wake, I, I enter the big, massive, wonderful door. Uh, uh, it's interesting, but it's, there is no door like this one. This is a door. There is no door. It's, it's all open like this. So I, I get inside. And I, I climbed the stairs, beautiful stairs. And then when I came in, I look at, oh my God, what a beautiful place. <laughs> Fantastic place, baby. I want to be here. And then when I was walking in that massive hallway, massive, I can tell you, I'm going to tell you something, probably about 50 meters big. 50 meters is massive, massive. And then when I, I I was walking in to the place, some 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 lady came to meet me. It she was all in a robe, white robe, beautiful. And then she looked at me, and said, "You are here to to have a, a meeting with uh, Mrs. and say her name." I said, "Yes, I'm here because she called me." And then she said, "Yes, she's busy now." But wait here, and then she show me a place where I can sit and stay and wait for her. When she finishes, she's coming to talk to you. And then I, I was allowed to look at my, my, I was sitting like this, I was sitting like this, and I look at my right. And then on my right, there were other rooms, massive big rooms, and she was in there sitting, and she was, um, she was uh, talking to a bunch of people. Uh, so she was very busy and then she felt my presence and then she looked towards me and said, wait. And then I stayed there waiting for her. I don't know how long I stayed there waiting for her, but then she came and sit by my side. And she was beautiful. And she told me, I want you to help my kids. They soon need your advice and I want you to help them. And I said, yes, I will. And then I came back. I left her. So I know she's so fantastic. She's beautiful. She's okay. And uh, and then all these experiences I share with my sister, my 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 sister, blood sister, because she knows that people are also. And I told her about the kids because she can help also. My my sister can help also. So 
about uh, six months after that six months after that um, the kids <laughs> contact me <laughs> to ask me for advice and then I gave of course and the result is positive they were fantastic made in the right decisions and okay now I'm gonna tell about the the gentleman okay the first uh, one I had with him the first experience I had with him because he died two years after okay he died two years after her death she had an he had an accident and he died by the accident so oh god that is the result of crying so the first experience i had with him was uh about uh, about six months after his death I I came to a place it looks like the same place as she was you know when I, I met her first now second when I met her second time in the in that building in that uh, massive building it looks like the same building because the color is the same on the marbles etc the same but it is it, it, uh, another entrance okay is another entrance is I was like a like a building like this so I that the entrance but this I met him this side here okay and I came walking on the streets beautiful place actually very beautiful place very very clean very white very peaceful I, I came walking the streets and I saw that man um, resting against the wall of that uh, building of course when I was there I didn't recognize that it was the same one because for me it was a, a, another building a big massive building after that I, I linked this the thing together and then I was but in, when I was in there, I didn't connect, okay? I thought it was another one, but probably it's the same. And th there were a small entrance on that side, not massive, it's a small entrance, like a normal, normal entrance, but even normal, normal for them, okay? Not, not normal for us. Very tall, very big but not that big like the other one so i i reckon about um, three meters tall and uh, two meters large like this so he was resting against the wall nearby this door and then i approached him and said hi hi are you okay nice to meet to, to see you here and he said Mm, I'm not that okay. He said, why not? Why you're not okay? He said, because I realized that um, I didn't accomplish everything that I was supposed to accomplish when I was in there. And then I look at him and say, yes, I know. And he looked at me and said, you know? He said, yes, I know. I... I think you should have done more in another direction but alas you are here now and uh, it's nothing you can do now so the best way is to accept what happened and uh, have another opportunity to go back and uh, do whatever we I said we were programmed to do so that means I 
should be included in the in that um, in that um, in the in the in the work they were doing. They excluded me because I was um, how I'm gonna say I was very rebellion. I, I I had a free mind, like you know me now. So for them, they were, this was not possible because they were very religion. So in that area there, so they didn't recon. They, they were not able to see that. He was not able to see that whatever he came to do was bigger than what he was doing. And that's one of our mistakes. Because you are afraid. You are afraid of experimenting the new. And sometimes the new is the one that you came to do. You came to break. To break uh, rules. You came to break old beliefs and to introduce something new. I was not afraid of that. Probably because of my experiences, past experiences, I was not afraid of, of challenging. And he was. He was going more on the book. And I was not going. I was the, uh, he was like the white, the white uh, shape. I was the black shape. He didn't. So much so that once, when in in uh, when I was about uh, twenty two, I was living with him and his wife, and then I asked him some questions, you know, religion questions, and then he looked at me and said, "Oh, Miriam, must be you to make this question. <laughs> no other person would ever think about it." <laughs> And then he said, he, he, he always did it when I was talking to him about my ideas. And he always did like this, not possible, oh my God, where this girl comes with these ideas from? <laughs> but these ideas were exactly what God wants him to see. And he was not able to connect with that ideas. I was challenging everything and he was not connected with this spirit of free from the old and embrace the new. So he knew he knows now that all my questions were to wake him up. And he was not able, he was <laughs> refusing to wake up. So he said he was now, at that moment when I met him, in that moment, because now it's different, when I met him, he was very, he was very sad, not upset, but he was regretting not to have been able to fulfill all that, because he was very intellectual, he was supposed to write books, and he did that. He was supposed to influence in different in different uh, vision different path in different uh, more open and he was closed ah uh, yeah he was supposed to be a writer and he didn't so yes and then i told him look you're gonna go back and then you're gonna walk again and try to do whatever you are not able to do now. That is a second chance, I told him. That is a second chance. And just embrace the second chance. And then I asked him the question, have you seen your wife already? And he said, no. And I said, yeah, but a long time you're here, why not? He said, because she's too busy. She's very busy, I was not able to see her. So you see, it's not it's not uh, it's not what you wanted. It's what is supposed to be. It's another lesson for us to learn. So don't expect I'm gonna die tomorrow and I'm gonna meet someone. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's not like this. Depends the scared of the other person also. So the second time I saw him, it was very recently about uh, six months ago 
I I was in another place when I saw me I was looking around I think I'm lost <laughs> I didn't recognize the place <laughs> the roads the streets um, I was in a do you know there is a road here and then another entrance here and then another road here but that one it's like a it's close here the, the road is here and then come here like this and then like this so another road goes down there okay so i came here i i i was here that place and then I was walking like this, and then I look around and say, what the heck, where am I now? I don't know where I am, I think I'm lost. And then I just came to that road here. I didn't continue it there, I came to that one here. And then I decided to sit on the pavement, you know, and say, okay, let me sit here and think what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna discover where to go because I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> And I am alone here, so I'm going to sit here and wait and see what's going to happen. And then I sit there and think, my God, what am I doing here? I don't know how long they stay there. And then suddenly, from this road here, remember, it was, a, 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 it was a, like an L, make like this and this, okay? I was sitting here. And then I saw a car coming that road here coming that one and then I saw someone stopping the car just uh, about three houses before because it was a corner there is one house here another one here okay and then I was sitting here with in front of another house so there is about three houses here one on the corner and then about two houses and that second house there he stopped the car there that person stopped the car there. And then he opened the door. When I saw who was coming down, was him. He came out of the car and then he looked at this lady sitting down there and he looked like Miriam. And I said, yeah. And then I said his name. Oh my God, you're here. <laughs> And then I ran to him and then he opens his arms and then I got into his arms and he pushed me out on the on the on the on the air <laughs> and he was embracing me and it was so good and I said oh my god I miss you so much everyone is missing you so much oh my god you shouldn't have gone because now all everyone is missing you you it's so hard to be without you and then um, he said, yeah, Maz, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I'm telling you, he was very tall, taller than he was here in there. He was looking like he was in his 30s. And when he dies, he, he was about nearly 70. He was 70, actually. Because I'm 70 now, he was older than me. So he was already 70 something. So he was not, because when he died uh, about four years ago, he, he had a, a white hair. Now he doesn't have a white hair anymore. His, his hair is black. And, um, and then he pushed me out and he, you know, in his arms and he embraced me and he said, Oh, so nice to see you. La, la, la. E aquela coisa mais gostosa. And it was so nice, so you know how nice to see you here and it's so nice to, to have you and then he looked at me said okay i have a, a message for you to give to my daughter and they said yes tell me <laughs> and then he said i'm very happy what's happening in her life i'm very happy that he she made the right decision that you gave to her and uh tell her that I approve everything that she's doing and I, I, go, I, gave, I give her my blessings and then I said oh, I have to go and he said yes you have to go and then I come back to my 
to my body. And of course, next day, I had to send a message to his daughter and say, look, I had a very nice dream with your father.